for today's video we're going to take a look at a Munro LN160X mechanical calculator made somewhere in the 1950s. In part one we looked at the restoration of the Munro. I'll put a link to that video in the description. But for now let's have a look at the machine now it's completed. So having completed the restoration of the Munro we can demonstrate some of its features. For doing simple addition you just type in a number and crank the handle forwards. So we'll add 176 plus 1431 plus 2079 to 079 plus 514 giving us the total of 4200. To enter a number into the Munro you simply press the appropriate button. If you find you've pressed the wrong button in a column you can press one of the others and the original button will pop up. If you wanted a zero you can either leave the column blank or press the bottom button which is the same as a zero. If you want to clear the whole lot you press this button and they all pop up. For subtraction, first you have to enter the number into the register. So if we want to enter 10,000, I only need to press the 1 there because all the rest are noughts and wind the handle forwards to put that up into the register. I'll stick the comma in there just to make it clearer. I'll reset the counter, although that's not necessary for doing simple subtraction. So if I now want to take away from that 3,929, I'll type that in, 3,929, and in this case I wind the handle backwards to subtract that. And then if I want to take 1147, 1147, and take that away, and then finally take away 4,882, so 4,882, wind the handle backwards, and we're left with 42. To clear the counter at the top here, I just wind this handle forwards and that resets it all to zero. To clear the register at the bottom, I wind the same handle backwards and that resets the register to zero. You'll notice for everything I've done so far, when I type in a number and crank the handle, the numbers pop back up again, so it resets to zero. If I want to add that number multiple times, I press the repeat key, and this way, when I crank the handle, the numbers stay down, so I can do multiples of that number. So, if I want to multiply 489 by 5, I type in the 489 that I've done. With the repeat key down, I turn the handle forwards five times. And it shows up here the answer, 2445, and it shows that I've multiplied it by five. And you can still see the 489 that I've used in, on the keyboard. I'll just clear the counter and the register. I'll leave the 489 in. Now if I want to multiply that by 365, I don't have to turn the handle 365 times. In the ones column, I turn it the five times, like that, and then I shift the carriage across. So now I'm multiplying in the tens column, and that'll be six times like that, and then finally for the hundreds column I've moved the carriage across one more and I do it three times, one, two, three, so I've now multiplied 489 by 365 giving the answer 178,485. I probably ought to show how I've been moving the carriage just then. There's a knob on the front here and you can simply move the carriage one character at a time by turning that knob. You can also, if you want to move it several, you can just pick it up and drag it across like that. So if I want to do something slightly more complicated, if I do 7189 multiplied by 32,251 so in the ones column, I'll turn the handle once, then in the tens column, five times, and then the next column, another five, and then the next column will do the two, and finally three. 
So I've multiplied my 7,189 by 32,551. And then I think, oh, I've made a mistake, haven't I? It was meant to be 32,251. So I move back to the column where I've made a mistake, and I can simply wind it back and correct that mistake. So I've now multiplied my 7,189 by 32,251, giving the answer 231,852,438. If we want to do something that has decimal points in it, we can use some of these markers to mark the place of the decimal points. And on the keyboard, you can move this wheel, and for whichever column you move the wheel, it puts this red marker down, so you can remember where your decimal place is. So, if I want to multiply 78.464 by 3.142, I'll put the 78 there, I'll roll over the decimal point, and then put the 464 in there. And then I want to multiply that by 3.142, so in the counter it'll show the 3.142, so the decimal point will be there. So you add, there's three decimal places here and three decimal places here, that means there will be six decimal places in your answer. So if we now do the uh, two for the first one, move it across to the tens and we'll do four, and then across to the next column we'll do one, and then finally three. So you can see, in the counter we've got 3.142, and we already had the 78.464, and that gives the answer 246.533888. For division, generally you'll move the carriage all the way across to the right to allow for decimal places. So if we want to divide 193.03011, we'll enter that 193, put the decimal point in, 03011. And then we'll crank the handle forwards once to add that into the register, so it's here, 193.03011. Then we'll reset the counter because the answer is going to come in the counter, so we'll just reset that to zero. And we'll also reset the keyboard and get rid of that decimal place marker. And we want to divide that by 4.55, so we'll put the 4.55 in there. And now we want to work out where the decimal place is going to be in the answer. We've got 12 decimal places in the register and 7 on the keyboard. So you take the 7 from the 12, giving you 5 decimal places for the answer, which is going to appear in the counter here. And division is done by multiple subtraction. So you wind the handle backwards until the bell rings. The bell indicates there's been an underflow, and then you wind it back on one to clear the underflow. So we'll wind it backwards, and on the first wind it underflows, so we add that back in again. Shift the carriage across one, and wind it back till the bell rings, and then add one back in again. and keep that process up. And you can see now we have all zeros in the register. That means it's worked out exa exactly. And the answer is 42.4242. The bell is very quiet, so quite often you won't hear it or you'll go sailing past it. And then you have to wind on a few turns, but you can still correct it. If you've underflowed and gone on a couple, you can just wind it back a couple. And there's a mechanism inside the machine that if you're halfway through a calculation, you can't then reverse direction. You have to complete that turn and then go back the other way. That covers most of the operation and use of the machine. We'll now take the covers off and have a quick look at how the mechanism actually works. 
For each column of numbers, there are a pair of notched wheels on this shaft here. The one on the left has five notches, and the one on the right has four notches cut at different lengths. If I press a number one, you'll see the right hand wheel move in a little bit. And then its longest notch will interact with this notched wheel here, clicking it on one place. If I press the number two, the right hand notched wheel will move in a little bit more and two of its notches will interact with the wheel here and so on up to four when it'll move in as far as it goes and it'll click the wheel at the top here four clicks. If I press five the left hand wheel moves in and that moves the top wheel on five notches. And then if I press 6, it moves the left one in and the right one in just enough to click 1, so you get 5 plus 1, which is 6. And so on, up to 9, which moves them both in as far as they'll go, and you get a full 9 clicks on the wheel at the top. The wheel at the top is the one that then transfers to the printed number wheels in the register itself. The carry function is done by this drum at the back here. If I type a number into the keyboard and rotate the machine slowly, you'll see the wheel here turning and that transfers to the numbered wheel in the register. If the register then carries, a little pin on the register wheel will depress this lever here. When that lever's in the down position, it will deflect one of these paddles as it goes past. And when that paddle's deflected, it'll turn the next digit on by one, like that. And then this lever here will be reset back to the up position, and it's ready to start the cycle again. The Munro's quite tiny, probably smaller than you think. If I put an A4 sheet of paper in front of him, he more or less disappears. If I bring in a comparable machine made by Lagomassino of Italy, you'll see this one's quite a lot bigger. I think this video has gone on more than long enough. If you've enjoyed watching, feel free to like the video and subscribe to the channel. There'll be more vintage stuff and repairs coming soon. So, thanks for watching, and I'll see you in a future video.